This is more, not so much advertising, it's really entertainment, and therefore it's almost parallel with it being a movie. The first moment when you get these treatments, you're like, wow, this is, this is something very special. It's, it's, it's not your usual ad. Hennessy is made up of seven distinct taste notes and uh, the concept was to like visualize those tastes so it's like synesthesia. It's like a journey through space and time through nebulas and planets and each taste is represented by one of these different planets. Ridley Scott was really hands-on on this project. From the first storyboards he drew himself to all the way till the end where every meeting we had which was about once or twice a week he would storyboard every idea so we had an exact blueprint we can take to our artists and they could develop it into the actual shots. My favourite world out of all of them would probably be the spicy edge world, the, the making of the woman. I think that looks really cool. I like the way it kind of she builds and especially the, the shot of the hand, the hand builds. I think that's, the, that's one of the key moments for me and kind of, oh, I'm watching something quite special here. Making it look like spicy and technical and, and AI is, su is such a, you know, is such a weird effect. We started to do uh, like small tests that are technical, of course, but not much detailed. But that would give us a behavior that we can judge in advance. There was an actor on set, but later on we decided to go full CG because it's so much easier, the integration of these particles that Ridley wanted, and it would be much harder to get CG trails to interact with a real human. It was tricky because we knew that the whole effect would tell the story, right? It, it was moving in a certain way, it would look like spice. The effect itself is looking good if you go close up, if you look at what it's doing internally, but that didn't really tell the whole story, that didn't work for us. We had to come up with really different angles, create some nice camera moves, basically compose the whole sequence together. Otherwise it, it was going to look just not right. For every sequence, we uh, had these breathtaking images that our concept department created, representing some of the key shots for each world. When I saw the concept art for Flowing Flame for the first time, I was blown away. Uh, you could already tell that this would be something very challenging, certainly nothing that you do every day. Uh, we own you with something bigger. It was cool, because we only had this small portion shot, just the people inside the cockpit of a glider, and the rest we had to create completely in CG. And we really had to convey the sense of heat. The clouds really had to feel super hot, as if they were almost burning. And this required lots of R&D for the interaction of the glider with the smoke. And we also had to do these lighting effects with red light shining through the clouds and hitting the plane. The rising heat sequence was something I was quite heavily involved in, so I feel quite proud of the work we achieved in that section. If you think of that shot, probably only uh, the walkers were the only thing that we actually shot on, on set, and we had to create everything else around that, which became quite a tricky number in terms of DMP projections, and especially finding the colour and the tone and the palette of that whole kind of sequence. One of the biggest success of this commercial is the idea is so, so strong, and then it's directed really, really well. I've been on sets before, but just seeing Ridley work, he knows he's right around a set. <laughs> he has three cameras working at the same time, and he'll just be sitting there going, camera one, camera two, camera three, pull in a little bit more, which is good because they've got to do so many sets. Um, you've only got a week. He needs to be on point for everything. And yeah, he was. Our treatment was continually evolving because Ridley would uh, sketch continually on set, so we need to reference real-world images to correspond with those drawings. For the wood crunch sequence, we had to create a character. Um, the character was called a golem. So he's that kind of wood creature that gathers all the pieces from the wood ground and kind of gets built up progressively. Uh, in the end, he cocoons himself, and then a lot of flying birds of the forest just kind of form that kind of dense cocoon around him. I figured it had to be a dance, 
because it had to be not sinister, it had to be certainly intriguing. There's a certain flow that is happening. There's an actor that is dancing, so you need to kind of sell your effects with that flow. So you kind of need to adapt to what is happening in the actual motion capture. If you look at the early development of wood crunch, you would see different submissions. You had a lot of stringy approaches, tweaks. Some didn't work, some did. There was also the bird, the way it basically works with the effect. There was this flock, which is another challenge in terms of forming the cocoon, because uh, you can't really have a lot of birds, but you can't have less as well. There's a sweet spot that you need to hit what we've achieved is, you know, it's a classic kind of mix now of how VFX integrates into like, you know, normal film filmmaking and how the result, you know, can come together and be kind of a seamless blend of something that's strange and beautiful and cinematic and quirky and all at the same time. So I'm proud of what we did. It looks great.